Hello and welcome to The Journal, I'm Steve Kendall. With its blend of agriculture, industrial and service industries and its central location, Henry County is well positioned to be set up for increasing economic development. Currently very successful, but more is in store. Uh, joining us for this first segment here on The Journal will be the Executive Director of the Henry County Community Improvement Corporation, April Welch, uh, Henry County Commissioner Bob Hodstadt, and also Sean Roop of Roop Enterprises. So uh, welcome to the Journal today and, and thank you for taking the time to be with us. Uh, appreciate you being here today. Thank you so much for having us. We appreciate yeah. the invitation. Yeah. And April, if you could talk just a little bit about, explain what the uh, Henry County Community Improvement Corporation does, what its purpose is, and, uh, and then we'll talk about some of, the, uh, some of the initiatives you have going on there. So the Henry County Community Improvement Corporation is charged with the economic development of the entire county. So we focus on uh, business attraction, business expansion, uh, and then a lot of workforce development uh, issues that we're working on. Yeah, now, and, and uh, Commissioner Hodstedt, uh, talk a little about the county's involvement, because obviously county commissioners have a lot on their plate running the county, but economics is what drives, uh, you know, the budgets for the county. So talk a little about your role and the county's role in economic development in Henry County. Oh, okay, uh, you know, yeah, that's one of the things when you when you become a county commissioner and, and uh, you get in there and, and you read the things that you're supposed to do, and it's, it's on the list, economic development is is right at the top of the list actually. So that's why we always have have a commissioner on the uh, CIC board here in Henry County and to, to kind of get our, our edge in there. Mm -hmm. This is primarily an agricultural county, right. but we always have room for expansion. And, and uh, we just had a, a, a new factory open up in the last couple of years. When they came on, they said, uh, how, are we, how are we gonna, I, I asked, how are we gonna fill this many jobs? 403 mm -hmm. to 400 jobs. Ah. They're there. The people are there. So we have room. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it's, it, and it is important uh, mm -hmm. with the tax rates and everything. That's how we that's how we pay our bills. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's one of the things. And when we talk with with county officials and economic development officials from around northwest Ohio, one of the key elements is the workforce. And, and we're blessed with that Midwest work ethic here. And, and of course, even the Northwest Ohio work ethic, especially in, in our more rural counties. So that's the thing. People say, where are the, where are the employees going to come from? They're here and they're well educated and they're well trained and they're well motivated. So you, you touched on a really important point. Yes. And we've noticed as we continue to get projects coming through our pipeline that more and more businesses, new businesses are concerned about where the workforce is coming from you know, they want to know what the commutes are like and and you know your proximity to larger cities so we've we've seen a focus on that uh as well as for our expansion projects you know when they're looking to expand and add new employees they want to make sure that there's uh talented people that are ready to fill all those positions so that's a huge initiative that we're working on uh, that we've been working on it and continue to focus on for 2021. Yeah, and and uh, Mr. Roop, uh, your talk a little about your business, what Roop Enterprises does uh, with regard to the the economic development in Henry County. We are a spec building company, mostly a uh, uh, industrial development company, and the the project that, that Bob was talking about there with Jack Products that we did a couple of years ago started as a spec building and became. Uh, doubling the size of the entire project and taking on 375 employees there uh, as a result of the building being there for the company to move into. Part of the problem with development stuff is when people are ready to go, they're ready to go now. They aren't ready to go a year from now when the building gets built. So we kind of start on the front end and pick the locations and do a lot of that groundwork. And then the companies come to us and and look for a place to be. And that's very much what happened with Jack Products. We enjoy working in Henry County and, and that area. They're they're very helpful to, to our needs and to what we need to, to get started. The location close to the bigger metropolises and that uh, help out when they're trying to find people. That was a big concern with Jack Products. They moved down from Saline, Michigan. Uh, they still have an operation there. I don't mean they moved out, but uh, they moved down here because they couldn't get any more people in Saline. Ah. And this was a big boost to them to be able to come in and actually have people respond when they put out for applications and, and to get people. They were they were very excited about that. Yeah. 
And, and you mentioned too the, the, the kind of location which gives you access to larger population bases. Uh, and this is for all three of you, however you want to talk about it. How important has the, uh, the upgrade of US 24 been to, to Henry County? Let, talk a little bit about that. You know, you know at, first when, for, at first when we talked about, uh, or when, when it was talked about mm -hmm. 30 years ago probably when it started, uh, I thought that's going to eat up a lot of farm ground, mm -hmm. and, and it did. But uh, and and I'm a farmer. I'm a farmer at heart. I'll tell you that right now. Mm -hmm. But putting it out there now, you get on that road and you can be in Fort Wayne or you can be in Toledo in a, in very short order. It makes a big difference, and it does even help our agriculture industry here in Henry County, and not only our ag industry but all of our industry to have a, a four lane highway right out your back door. Mm -hmm. Uh, that'll get you connected to everything that you need. Yeah. That's a big item. Mm -hmm. It's a yeah. big item. Yeah, and I know. And most of, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. M most of our customers are automotive related in the uh, bigger industrial stuff, defiant stamping there in Napoleon and, and Jack products and others. And they like that location because you're just down the road from the Fort Wayne truck and bus plant. You're just up the road the other way to the Jeep plant and, and north to Detroit to the places there so it's kind of a central area for them even uh, the Japanese operations Honda Toyota are down in southern Ohio and mid Ohio and, and Indiana as well so it makes it a nice spot for them to branch out and the 24 route certainly helps them get to 69 75 Toledo Fort Wayne all the places they need to be that was a that was a good project it was a, a worrisome project when it was going on it sure right down the front of one of our properties as well but uh uh, it certainly has proved to be a, an asset to the community there. Yeah, and, and I guess too, you also have access to uh, the, well, uh, the, the 109, 108 through into Delta and places like that, which also then you give north-south access to the Ohio Turnpike as well. So you have connections with that also. So that, that works out too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and, um, uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to just add one thing in there about mm -hmm. workforce and we can talk about that a little bit later. But the one thing about, uh, you know, having, having uh, farm people, agriculture people, there a lot of them. A lot of them don't farm enough ground. They have to have a job on mm -hmm. the site. That's your number one thing. The number two thing, and a big asset that we're really losing in Henry County is our young people that don't want to mm -hmm. stay here because there aren't enough jobs available. And in my opinion, if we're going to do anything, we need to build some some industry here to keep those young people here and keep them interested in our area because Henry County is a great place to live and work. Yeah, yeah. those yeah, and those are very good points. There is that. In migration to larger cities, it seems, especially with younger people, they want, to, they want to see a big city, but then in some cases, that's where their job happens to be. And so, yeah, it's, it's a very good point that in order to keep them in Ohio and, and, and use all of those skills that we've uh, been able to give them, it'd be nice to have them stay here and, and enjoy, uh, you know, the, the nice lifestyle that we have here. So that's, that's a very good point. Um, and that's certainly going to be a neat tie-in to, to what Jim and, and Jim Hoops are going to talk about, too. Uh, four county program out there in Northwest Tech and and uh, I guess Northwest Community College now. I'm sorry, I'm old school. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I'm just in love with the programs they're doing out there to help train maintenance people, train electricians. My son's taking uh, welding classes out there right now. Mm -hmm. All skills that we need to have to, to give people a little better wages and, uh, and make them more useful for the jobs that we have out here. Yeah. Great. Okay, well, we appreciate you being on for this segment, and uh, thank you again for taking the time to uh, join us here. We'll be back in just a moment with more about economic development in Henry County here on The Journal on WBGU-PBS. Thanks for staying with us here on The Journal. Uh, we're talking about economic development in Henry County, and we're joined in this segment uh, by April Welch, again, the Executive Director of the Henry County Community Improvement Corporation, uh, County Commissioner Bob Hodstedt, and also this time by uh, Jim Dravis, uh, who is involved in workforce development, uh, and, and he'll be more specific about that a little later in the segment, at uh, Northwest State Community College. So, uh, April, let's talk a little bit about, uh, we mentioned this in the first segment briefly, but. Talk about the importance of, of workforce development when it comes to what you do in terms of economic development. So we wanna make sure that we are building a talented pipeline of workforce for any uh, expansion projects or any attraction projects. And right now we're really looking at uh, getting into the schools, you know, even as young as elementary schools to educate mm -hmm. them on the importance of, uh, you know, 
<clears throat> exposing them to different careers and those careers that we have right here in Henry County. So hopefully they know of those careers so that they can, we can retain those young people, or if they do go off to a college out of the city or out of the state, that, that we can bring them back to jobs that we have right here. Mm -hmm. So we're really taking a hard focus in that and making sure that they know everything that's available um, that right here in the county. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I know Commissioner uh, Hotstedt, you mentioned the fact that one of the one of the important things is is keeping people who grow up around here in the area. So, and obviously, information and training are are extremely important, and, and the county is is working with all of those different partners in that to to make that happen. Yes, I, I you know I, as I mentioned earlier in the segment, we're losing our our biggest asset, and that's our young people, and we want to keep them here. And and the other asset that we have to help do that is. Northwest State Community College, and it's a great job there. And I won't speak anything about that because Jim, Jim's the boss on that one. Okay, all right. Yeah, and, and uh, Jim Dravis, talk about your role. I know that uh, I looked at your title, and, I, and hopefully we've got it right, but it says Executive Director of Community and Workforce Development, Custom Training Solutions, uh, Northwest State. So talk a little about what, what's behind all of that a little bit, what your role is. Well, that's, very, that's a very good question too, because Custom Training Solutions is the workforce development arm of Northwest State Community College. So if you can understand that we've been here for 50 years, mm -hmm. and then what we do is take curriculum, and I typically go to companies and do incumbent worker trainings. So I'm more connected to apprentices and companies. And sometimes companies will not prefer to have the students sent out here for 64 hours for a college class. They might want me on site for uh, 32 hours, 24 hours, one day, whatever the class uh, has to be. So I have a lot of traveling equipment. 90% of the custom training uh, solutions business is on site at customer locations. And I would say my biggest change, I just uh, completed my 10th year here. And uh, I would say the work from incumbent and apprentice training to workforce solutions is more of our goal right now. And you know, working with April with the CIC as part of that. And I'll, I'll say 10 years ago with Rob McCauley and Jim Hoops, we started to really work with companies and the drain of workforce and, and outreach to the youth is what we're really after now. Rob started the Route 6 group and that kind of blossomed into a training center at the automatic feed company right in Napoleon. Ah. So that, that company hosts uh, pre-engineering students. Last year, we just added uh, industrial skilled in the morning session. Now with COVID, we had a delay with getting some kids scheduled there, but what we have for that is hydraulics, pneumatics, industrial electricity, more hands-on, a different pathway as compared to the afternoon engineering classes. April and I have a great time with the high schools in Henry County, and it's uh, Patrick Henry, it's Holgate, uh, Liberty Center, and Napoleon Schools. Then we work with Four County Career Center, and then from Northwest, Northwest State perspective, we, we kind of bring the skill and the workforce up a little bit more with more in-depth training. Our biggest issue is probably finding these undecided students, and uh, I love the Henry County kids that have worked hard with the 3.5 GPA. They're going to a four-year college but there's a big group of kids that haven't quite found their way. Mm -hmm. We'd like to get them to Four County Career School for Career Pathway, but if they don't, we go to high school and offer shorter term training, uh, maybe, maybe more of a career outlook and try to get to those kids. We have some high schools graduating anywhere from 20 to 35% of their high school seniors with no pathway. And that means no military, no uh, college plan. And those are the kids we're looking after. Yeah. Uh, maybe the kids serving the in, in a service industry that just haven't found their way and to us, it's more of an education factor than anything else. Uh, it's bringing knowledge to these kids of what's in Henry County. Like, like Mr. Haas said, said before, we're losing these kids that are going away and getting jobs, whether it's in Columbus, Lucas County, wherever, and they have jobs right here in Henry County, which are very similar. So that's the kind of things we do. And I'm also tied with Job and Family Services, which has been a, a, a real, I want to say, improvement too. April, I work with the Job and Family Service Office, and that's an age group of 14 to 24. So we look at the 18 to 24 that are underemployed, and we can give them job skills uh, to walk into a factory to begin an entry-level position, and hopefully work into an apprentice program for a higher livable wage. Then that 14 to 17-year-old, we work really hard to give them the career pathways, uh, something as simple as so showing them a virtual welder at Northwest State. Uh, we have a virtual welder, which is not the real thing, but it's kind of similar to an arcade game. And the kids just love it and it shows them what welding could be. So those are the things we look at from uh, youth outreach to high school graduates, job and family services, and incumbent worker training. 
Now, have you found that, uh, and because this has been talked about a long time, the fact that you know there was a, there was a large push for everybody should go to college for four years, and obviously, you know, the television station is affiliated with Bowling Green State University. We're a four-year university, uh, so we have some vested interest in in that. But at the same time, as you mentioned, there's there's a significant portion of high school students, junior high students, who that may not be the pathway for them. Have you found that the acceptance now is, is better for an alternative path besides just go to a four-year university? Has that been, been more positive than maybe it was 10, 15, 20 years ago? I think that our local high schools are doing a really good mm -hmm. job of <clears throat> presenting the options equally so that there is still a push um, you know, to go into you know, whatever career path that you choose. But I think that it's not putting on them that that's the only way to go to be uh, successful because there's a lot of other uh, exposures or technical training that they can do uh, that that doesn't necessarily mean they have to go to a four year college right. if they're not ready for that out of high school. Yeah. And, and, and Jim, real quick, as you, we'll give you the last word in this segment. Um, if someone's interested in, in what you do there, what's the easiest way for them to to contact you and, and talk about what you can provide for them and, and how you can, you can partner with uh, uh, companies and organizations in Henry County and in the area. You know, our direct line is 419-267-5511, I believe. And that's, uh, you just call and ask for custom train solutions. My office number is 419-267-1390. And you can call our, or my email's first initial last name, jdrews at northweststate.edu. Okay, great, good. Well, thank you again for taking the time to be with us. We'll be back in just a second. We'll be talking with uh, some of the elected officials from Henry County and the state's role in economic development in the state of Ohio and in Henry County specifically. Back in just a moment here on The Journal. Thank you for staying with us here on The Journal. Uh, in this segment, we're uh, joined once again by April Welsh, Executive Director, Henry County Community Improvement Corporation. Um, also, District 1 State Senator mm -hmm. Rob McCauley and uh, state representative from District 81, Jim Hoops, and of course, uh, they represent Henry County, both of them. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the state's role, and I know that as we've gone through the other discussions that we've had uh, today, uh, the state in, in economic development, the government involvement in economic development obviously is, is a key part. So, uh, you know, Jim or Rob, one of you wanna jump in and talk about the state's role and how you see that with, with economic development in in your district, the areas you represent. Go ahead, Rob. Well, I, I think that the, the state does play a big role and that some of it is, is in a macro sense and some of it is in a micro sense. So uh, from a macro point of view, we have to make sure Ohio is a great place to live, work and raise a family. We have to make sure that Ohio, especially relative to other states, has a good business environment, isn't over-regulating, isn't over-taxing, mm -hmm and many of those things. And then on top of that, from a, from a more micro point of view, there are programs that we've put in place uh, regarding the tech cred program that will allow employers to seek reimbursement for training their employees. Um, there are some other programs we put in place through, through tax abatements and things of that nature that allow our locals to be a little bit more competitive with what's going on um, and some other grant programs for infrastructure expansion and whatnot. And then one thing that's coming on the horizon, uh, this is actually a bill that I'm working on directly, deals with broadband expansion in mm -hmm. the rural areas. You know, certainly we've seen this need become even more prevalent over the past year, uh, where it's kind of created a haves and have nots among people who do or don't have internet. And so uh, we need to make sure going into the coming years, as that need becomes even more pressing, that we do what we can to ensure the, the expansion of broadband throughout all these underserved areas. Yeah, and that's, yeah. A, that's a really good point because if you, especially with the situation we've dealt with with regard to COVID-19, uh, for people who are working from home, which a lot of people are at the moment, still are, uh, if you can't do that, it is a, it is a, it is a downward pull on, on being able to do your job. And, and rural areas have been traditionally kind of underserved just simply because of the lack of density of population. So yeah, broadband, adequate broadband, better than adequate broadband, a real real important thing. Uh, and, and I guess as both of you look at, at how the state can deal with that, what is the atmosphere in Columbus right now with regard to looking at things that would, would make Ohio a better place to do business and to work and, and raise a family, that sort of thing? What, what is the climate right now for that in the, in the legislature? 
Well, for me, I, I think in the House, I think the climate is, you know, you look at the, th the things that uh, Senator McCauley talked about, mm -hmm. you know, to keep the tax rates low. Um, and by doing that, you expand the, the, uh, the base. Mm -hmm. And then also keeping uh, the regulations, you know, continue to uh, eliminate regulations, which Senator McCauley was very instrumental in a bill he, he got through last year. Um, and then also keeping the electrical rates low. Mm -hmm. And those are some of the things that we're looking at. I know there's this House Bill 6 that's out there. And mm -hmm. there were some good things in there, that, uh, but there were also some things we find out later on how they came about. We're going to have to look at that. Mm -hmm. And I think those are three things that, uh, that we'll look at. But then also looking at the workforce and how do we bring people here to the state of Ohio. One of the things I felt that really helped, uh, you know, a few years back when a individual went to like a community college and then they ended up going to a four year, a lot of those credits didn't move with that person. Hmm. And so we did some things that to make sure that those credits moved on because you went from, a, you know, a, an associate's degree. And then if you wanted to get a bachelor's degree, all those credits, we wanted to make sure moved on. And and I feel that that's very important as people look at what they want to do in the future. Right. Yeah. And, and because that there is an economic, there is a cost to to providing, whether it's a, an associate's degree, or a bachelor's degree, you don't want somebody to have to start completely over when they already have two years of, uh, of quality education uh, in hand. So, yeah. Uh, and, and I think, yeah. too, I was reading a, an article, you know, the millenniums. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one thing they're looking at is they're, you know, they want to get a good job, but they also want to be able to do some other things, you know, outside their job. And what the what the article talked about was bike trails, walking mm -hmm. trails, you know, those kind of things. And here up in here in northwest Ohio, uh, we have a trail called the Buckeye Trail. That's a right. circular trail around the state of Ohio. And it also connects to a trail from uh, South Dakota all the way to New York. So it's mm -hmm. just things like that uh, that I think young people are also looking at you know, that they have other things outside of just, just work. Yeah, that balance of, of work and, and quality of life, whatever. And, uh, and, and you, yeah, you don't have to sell me. I'm a huge user of the, uh, the Cannonball Trail and, and all sure. of that. So that it is, yeah. it is, it's an advantage. It's a valuable tool that makes it attractive to live here. And that's what, as you said, millennials especially, they're looking for more than just, well, and as we know, more than just one job. They are going to have four, five, six, maybe different positions, if not more than that, over the course of their lifetime versus previous generations who did one thing for 30 years or whatever. So it's, a, right. it's more of a challenge with them. You're right, you're yep. right, yeah, yep. yeah. Um, I mean, I also think with this budget that we put in or the governor has put in, we're and the budget was just introduced to, in the mm -hmm. House last week. And so we're looking at some of the probably dissecting it is a good word for it. And then once we get done, the Senate will dissect it. And I don't know, Rob, you'll probably just agree to everything that the House does <laughs> and we'll just move on. And but uh, if not, uh, but but some of the things, you know, that we're looking at is and one thing we found with especially with this uh, this pandemic is people having to upskill in their jobs. Mm. You know, and I think that's where uh, community, Northwest State and Jim Dravis and April, and uh, they do a good job of, of finding out what exactly do we need out there. And I've always seen a community college like a speedboat. You know, they can change on a dime where sometimes a four-year college and nothing against four years, but they're like, like a tanker where it's tough for them to change a curriculum. Uh -huh. But a community college can change something. So if like Jim goes to a community or a, in a business and they say, we need this and this and this, they can change it, you know, very quickly. And I think that's very important, too, to, for mm -hmm. some of these people, because there's a lot of jobs out there. But the key is, are people qualified to do those jobs? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. OK, um, I think we'll have to leave it there because we're right on the right on the edge of time here. I want to thank, uh, you know, Rob McCauley. Uh, Jim Hoops, and of course, April, thank you so much for being on to talk with us about those issues. And uh, uh, we welcome you all back at any time you're interested in, in coming on to talk about those issues that, that affect Henry County and the state with our, with our representatives and our senators. So thank you again for being here. You can check us out at WBGU.org. And of course, you can join us every Thursday night at 8 o'clock on The Journal on WBGU-PBS. We will see you again next time.